Saturdays. Roll over. Make room for me. Under your belly, hip to hip, cheek to cheek. The weekend routine. Cat and mouse, cherry to tree, rabbit to hare. Crows cackle. Frustrated at losing something. Food, ground, branch, babies, each other. If they're here, there's no West Nile virus in our courtyard. Who told you that? <coughs> Same person who meanders the hallway in bathrooms nine hours a day. Take the movie schedule while I sip steaming New Orleans coffee in Queens. You can never make me sip your enlightened green tea, even if it's Uncle Lee's. To see the universe more clearly. Take a subway to a film. No, walk the Queensboro Bridge, the 59th Street Bridge, to Art Garfunkel. He should know better. He graduated from Queens College. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about our friends. Take apart the universe. Reinvent it. Throw out the old into the East River. On the road to the movies, not a speck of fear between us. We've been this way before. Quick, before we realize this is not new, nor is it a lie. I want to stop arguing now. I want to walk hip to hip, under your belly, cheek to cheek, cat and mouse, cherry to tree. Thank you. Once was not enough. I mean, oh, once was enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's not what I meant. Okay, well, we, we have to revisit the title. The boy who kissed me for the first time never kissed me again. At first, I could not recall his face or his name. I cast a net out, tried to capture so many faces, tried to match the one kiss with the one face. All at once, they vanish. If I close my eyes and return to the first kiss, the first boy, a vague aroma of soap rises but I see only a splash of bumblebee yellow smash against the brick wall. Okay, so something that Phil doesn't know is that I've been a travel writer for 30 years, so that means that I get to go to a lot of places and someone else pays for them. <laughs> and then I get to write, but you know, I think like someone paying me to write is like paying me to play because I love to write. So, okay, so this is one of the pieces from a trip. And uh, it was a time when they were opening the Magritte Museum, and like every wall, all the palaces had these huge um, sort of curtains. It was like a trompe d'oeil. The whole city had like clouds on all the walls. It was like incredible. When Magritte wasn't looking. <laughs> when is an apple an apple? When it is not a painting of an apple. Or when its high chartreuse makes us disbelieve its waxen sheen and size larger than the palace behind it. It tells us something, this apple, that it is an apple, overgrown, overcome with itself so vast, it drowns all sense of time, emits a faint perfume from the skin still sealed tight. Compare this to a baked apple, its skin shriveling, as sugar bubbles out of its core, gurgles from its bulbous green body, trembles in the heat of a roasting pan, settles once it hits the cool air, its pulp ready to receive the spoon that scoops out its heart. Oh. Wow. It, it was like, it was like Marguerite Overdrive. It was like crazy. It was like, they had, you know, reproductions in every room. They had green apples every. It was like nuts. Um, and this is a piece uh, related to Cuba. Love, liberty, and love. <coughs> Exotic, endangered species. Muy bonita. La línea perfecta. Very pretty. Perfect lines. Very precious. A love affair. 150,000 of them were stranded in 1961. Some have been painted with sponges. Some of them have had transplants from China, Yugoslavia, Russia, Albania, Argentina, and none of them have died. Many parts cannot be found and must be invented or hecho a mano, made by hand. Arturo made a part from an old chain link fence soldered for a perfect match. Forty years of the blockade has taught them to make miracles. Some are desired like diamonds, some sound like the Pink Panther, others the theme to the Godfather, 
se llama cubanismo, a paradox where things are forbidden, but in the end, officials look away. Movie stars like Rock Hudson sell in them. Everyone wants to ride in Augustine's Claro Cubano. One day the American cars in Cuba will disappear, Arturo says. But I am a revolutionary, so I am optimistic. Eventually, we will buy cars from the Asians. If El Bloqueo gets lifted, the cars will disappear from the roads and be preserved by the rich. Till then, Arturo celebrates his 31st anniversary with his wife, his car. I keep it clean, I kiss them, and I love them. If you had to choose, a smile stretches across his face. Mio caro es mi vida. Mi libertad. Mio caro es mi vida. I guess I didn't have to explain, like, you know, the, Cuban, the Spanish words. Um, this is called Roses Followed Her Across the Atlantic. Buried deep in steerage, they survived, wild and common and cultivated. Roses know their place on altars, in gardens, in pots, at weddings, at Virgin Mary's feet in May, at funerals, wakes, proms, communions, Mother's Days, christenings, night tables, bouquets, boutonnieres, bar mitzvahs, birthdays, recitals, greetings, Rose, Rosa, Rosina, Rosenblum, Rosmarina, Rosangela, Rose, Rose, Rose. Wild and common and climbing. War and roses, wine and roses, guns and roses. Roses planted by night in one corner, replanted the next day in another corner. Two men hiding their passion to determine where the rose would go. Their obstinance kept the rose in motion, like lost immigrants in South Queens. East, west, north, south, the plant's thorns got stronger, the buds got brighter, a battle of wits and wisdom, father-in-law, son-in-law, who owned the house, the garden, the rose, one fired by a peasant's instinct, the other by new ideas, in his new house, in the new world, roses, wild and common and hardy. Was actually from like a prompt or something. Um, so, oh. sorry, I got this a little bit botchable up here. Okay, feeding her. I prepare uh, elaborate meals to spark memories and conversation. I cook, I peel, cut, fry, broil, stew take spins on old recipes with fewer spices. Imagine the taste and weight of kindness will keep her here longer. She minces steps behind a three-wheeled walker, grabs a railing, the back of a chair, the side of a cabinet to steady herself. As I whip up a pasta con pizel to keep her from flying into thin air. my mom who's 96 and I do keep thinking if wow. I feed her she'll yeah she'll keep sticking around and she actually gives me like a lot of good things to write about yeah. she's pretty funny Don't they all yeah, yeah yeah I mean I just keep writing them down and she says you know I'm done with this all you people do is write down what I say <laughs> yeah you know well yeah <laughs> um, this is based on um, uh, a story I found out about Anna Magnani um, it's a little peculiar but everything about Anna Magnani is a little peculiar, right? Yeah, so, okay. So, um, it's called Impressions. Uh, she had a long relationship with a woman, a uh, good friend. The best of friends, they posed together, looking more alike each year. Vivacious, dark, controversial, women with pasts that followed them. When Anna Magnani died, Leonor Fini locked herself in the room with the corpse. For four days, she studied her, knowing they were together for the last time on earth. She observed, drew her in repose. After all the men, Picasso, Ernst, Genet, 
Feeney's heart belonged to Magnani, with whom she painted, whom she painted with no apologies. Feeney lived with 23 cats. If one fell ill, she fell ill, swirled in a pool of depression. Yet, the stilled Magnani inspired her to do what she did best, sketch, paint, document Magnani for herself, obsessed. I wonder, did she strain to Magnani's closet, slip into her clothes to hold her closer? Did she drink or did she eat? Was she dazzled by death? Did anyone dare disturb her? Did her cats gather at her feet? I picture her cross-legged, lotus position, sharing the bed with Magnani during those days. Picture her running her finger along Magnani's profile, brushing clouds of black hair over the pillow for the best effect, for the last goodbye, for the series of watercolors. Wow. Isn't that weird, though? It's really weird. I know. And Three minutes. I think I'm almost done. Yeah. Okay. So, this is for my um, this is for my husband, who oh, so many wow. of you know. Who is that? I don't know. <laughs> Bronx, 1982. That April, it snowed. After dating three months, I drove to his apartment to break up. <laughs> Trading drama for action, when he walked me to the car, I knew it wasn't over. Hood to wheel, rims blanketed in snow, we'd missed the blizzard during our lover's spat. We marched back along Creston Avenue, past shifty St. James Park to an overheated New York apartment. Welcomed by the blush of heat, we took our places under still warm sheets, the sound of the last snow flicking against thin window panes. Thank you. Wow.